the cell in Singapore. Chewing gum is illegal. Did you get caught throwing it on the ground? Boy, oh boy, you can get, you can get it. But I'm not gonna be in jail, yeah? What not to bring and to bring to Singapore. We've heard plenty of times that Singapore is a country full of fines. By that, I mean you can be fined for a lot of different things. To us, that's pretty intimidating. And that's why in today's video, we decided to go over what you should and shouldn't bring while traveling to Singapore. This will help set your expectations and keep you out of unpleasant times that you might encounter for not preparing for this trip correctly. All right, guys, so we have to say this. And there's always gonna be that, you know, one guy that you gotta mention this for. Let's talk about drugs. There's a mandatory death penalty for drug trafficking and drug smuggling in Singapore. Be careful about prescription drugs because it may also raise a flag. That's why travelers are advised to carry their prescriptions with them. Maybe even get a letter from your doctor saying that you have to take it. Although this may be a rare case, but police have the right to demand random drug tests for tourists. And if you test positive, you could be jailed or fined. Whether or not you partook by taking the drugs in Singapore or not, you could still be put in jail. Nobody wants to start a vacation like that. There's a penalty for possessing and consuming drugs is a maximum of 10 year imprisonment and possibly $200,000 fine or even both. Pirated materials like movies, CDs, bootleg DVDs, or even software. Eh, we're all kind of borderline sometimes when it comes to that bootleg software. But that's commonly found in Thailand, and it's very illegal to bring to Singapore. If you are that way inclined, you can risk shipping them home or even leave them. Unless you really want to risk it, then you're looking at possibly a thousand dollar Singapore fine per CD. So during the time that we travel, we both love carrying gum wherever we go, but we did not risk doing that in Singapore at all. So from what we heard, not only that you can't chew gum in Singapore, but also you can't bring gum to Singapore as well. Unless it's a proof that what you carry, the type of gum that you carry is for oral dental or it's a medical chewing gum. If you need medical chewing gum, that can be purchased in pharmacies in Singapore as well, according to the doctor's instructions. That is so crazy! That gum is illegal to sell in Singapore. Chewing gum is illegal. How much is the fine if I sell gum? <laughs> thousand US, uh, thousand Singapore, Singaporean dollars if I sell gum. But I'm not gonna be in jail, yeah? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Singapore plugs are pretty special and unique. All the plugs and sockets in Singapore are actually type G and the standard voltage is 230 volts. So you need to know what voltage your electrical appliances like some hair dryers or cell phones are actually capable of handling. Some may be dual voltage and some may not be dual voltage. For example, MacBooks are dual voltage and you will be fine to plug them in. It's just not all of your appliances that you carry with you, you'll know right off the bat if they're dual voltage or not. So we highly suggest checking. So you may need a converter if you're traveling from the United States or any other country that doesn't have a G power socket. We actually carry with us the power adapter called Septix. Now, Septix has two USB plugs and two sockets. 
It also has readers telling you exactly the amount of power coming out of the outlet. It's very handy in helping you save the device as it also has a surge protector. So if there's any kind of shortage while you're traveling, it grounded itself and stopped it from shorting out the devices that you plug into it. In case you plan on traveling to any other countries while you're on this trip to Singapore, Septix is great as well because it comes with 12 different plug sets that cover you from anywhere you go. We found it really helpful, especially when you have long layovers in different countries Sometimes you don't know what plug they are before you go. Another thing we love about it is that it's really sturdy when you plug it into the wall and it's small size makes it perfect to charge absolutely everything you have on you all at once. So next, this is a topic that we are quite concerned about because we both are the type of persons that we love carrying some basic stuff like the pill for headache, the pill for stomach ache. So normally we carry the first eight pack can i say put it pack yeah so normally we carry the food aid pack however one thing that we should know about singapore is that it's pretty easy to buy medicine especially for basic medical stuff in singapore so you don't actually need to carry like paracetamol tylenol panadol especially english is widely spoken in singapore so you don't have to be worried about communication with the pharmacist However, for some medicines like ADHD medications, something like sleeping pill, anti-anxiety pills, and some strong painkiller like codeine, you need a medical certificate to buy them in Singapore. Also, another concern about medical stuff is that you need to always ask the doctor at your home country or the pharmacist whether your medicine falls under the OPM Act or not. You can also look it up by yourself from Google. Generally, we found out that the safest way to carry the medicine with you in any country, including Singapore as well, is to actually have it in the original package. And it would be even better if that package is not open yet. This will make it clear that they are medicine and they are not the illicit drugs. And it will save time as well when you are at the airport and you got checked. Uh, if you compare the cost of medicine in Singapore to other countries in the same region, the medicine cost in Singapore is quite expensive compared to others. A box of antibiotics, for example, for 12 doses can cost you around 22 Singapore dollar in Singapore. Panadol is available in Singapore at about 6 Singapore dollars. We also realized that vitamin and those dietary supplements in Singapore generally is pretty expensive. Especially when we compare to the US, what costs about a US dollar in the US can cost up to about 20 US dollars in Singapore. So if you're the type of person that you take dietary supplement on a daily basis, and also if you are travel on budget, so don't forget to bring the dietary supplement with you as well. So now let's move on to the topic about clothes, what to wear and what to pack for Singapore. What you need to know first is that Singapore is pretty hot and humid. When we go anywhere in Singapore, we can see that they have the fan anywhere, especially in the train station. So humid in Singapore. And I actually, one thing that I realized about Singapore, that is my first impression, even though like it's the outdoor setting for the restaurant, but if you, rem if you look up like every space, they got their own fan. I imagine Singapore in summer must be really, really hot. So pack clothes that are light and comfortable. What we find out by ourselves is that generally the basic stuff like t-shirt, jeans, shorts, sneakers, or even flip-flop are commonly seen clothing just about anywhere you go and is also acceptable almost anywhere you go as well. But well, besides the fact about the weather in Singapore, one more thing that you should consider as well, Singapore itself is the cosmopolitan countries. The dress style here is generally urban, casual, practical. The only place that you normally will not encounter the dress code problem is in the more upscale downtown area of Singapore. So you can pack at least 
uh, we would say one nice outfit if you want to enjoy the nightlife and go to the high-end restaurants and bar in Singapore for the cost of clothing just in case you forget something and you need to buy it in Singapore I would say that what we find out is that clothing in Singapore is fairly expensive compared to the other countries in the same region because we just came from South Korea and in South Korea I bought the exact same one but in blue and guess how much I pay? 5 US dollars this one is no 5,000 5,000 yeah, which is, like which is like about four almost 5 US dollars but this one is so expensive $30 considering the size of clothing in Singapore what we realized is that the sizing is quite small so make sure you pack enough if you are a big guy oh and one more thing about Singapore it's not only full of futuristic building but there are plenty of beautiful temple with Chinese and Indian influence all over you might come across one while you're wandering around Singapore just like in our case so don't forget to bring shawl or some light cover so you can cover up your shoulder for women to be respectful so this may not necessarily be something that you need to pack or bring or not bring but it's something we need to talk about singapore does not require any vaccinations while entering the country unless you've been traveling to africa or south america within six days of arriving to Singapore. In which case, you'll need a certificate that shows you've been vaccinated against yellow fever. Imitation tobacco products like electronic cigarettes and vaporizers, but they're actually very illegal in Singapore. So you can't even carry these in your hand luggage, in your pocket, or you could be charged from $5,000 to $10,000 Singapore fine. Basically, all nicotine delivery systems are illegal to bring to Singapore. This includes nicotine gum and patches. Not only imitation tobacco products are illegal, you are expected to declare all tobacco product that you bring in. If you don't do this, you can be declared a $200 fine upon entry. I said earlier that Singapore weather is pretty hot and humid but I would also suggest you guys to not forget to prepare and bring stuff for rain and cold as well in Singapore What we find out is that Singapore weather is pretty much like Malaysia in terms of the weather Well, not only that it's hot and humid but sometimes you can expect to see the tropical downpour out of nowhere They said that rain in Singapore is a year-round occurrence How do you feel about this weather? Forget to bring rain jacket. A small foldable umbrella can help you move between rain shelters. So that's it guys, what else do we miss here? If you have any questions or do you have anything to add up from what we have said before, please feel free to comment down below and also if you have any questions at all, feel free as well to leave your questions down below in the comment section. All in all, Singapore rule is pretty strict in our opinion. But that is what makes Singapore clean and safe. <laughs> it's really clean in Singapore. Smell like zero pollution. Uh, I, I'm still really mind blown every I time. I know that there's also a reason why we're clean and we're green. Okay, now why? turn around and take a look. The building that you just walked past. In fact, Singapore is one of the safest country we have ever visited. Not even once that we walk around Singapore and we feel unsafe here, even if it was late at night. And just by understanding their rules, social norm and law will keep you out of the trouble in Singapore. If you're interested in finding an in-depth guide on everything from scams, where to go, 
what to do, what's free, the best restaurants, the cheapest places, the cheapest ways to get around, everything you need to know about the country. Just click the link in the description box and it'll bring you to our website where you can sign up for the guide and receive that in your email. So we'd like to take a quick moment and thank today's sponsor, Septix. This is their new small adapter. If you remember our previous videos that we've worked with Septix before, they had a quite larger adapter, but with their new adapter, it's even better for travelers because it's a quarter of the size, but does all of the same things. So if you're interested in checking it out, check the description box below and it'll take you to a link to the product. Itinerary? Itinerary. 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 So it will help you move your plan around. <laughs> <laughs> This is where we're staying tonight. Very, very traditional. Mosquito, mus mosquito net, fan, and no lights, nothing extra. But if you want a really local, traditional experience, I don't think it gets much better than this. Dude, even because it's so windy.